In the United Kingdom, exotic pet ownership is on the rise. However, not all owners possess the knowledge or experience to provide adequate care for these animals. Ark Wildlife Park is the United Kingdom's first rescue zoo, homing over 180 animals who have been rescued or donated from private pet ownership. Ark Wildlife Park originally started off life as purely a reptile sanctuary. So all the snakes and lizards in here are ex-pets. And then over the years, people started bringing us more and more unusual and weirder animals. This in here is a little grey banded king snake. This little lady in particular is an albino, so she's got some beautiful coloration on her. And you can see why these guys are popular as a pet species. These little snakes and lizards can make great pets because if you go away for the weekend, as long as you've made sure there's someone to give them some fresh water, these guys aren't gonna pine for you like a cat or a dog is going to, and they certainly don't need taking out for walks. So in some respects, they can actually be much less lower maintenance than sort of some of our more traditional pet animals like cats and dogs. But whether you actually get that reciprocal love come back to you, not really, I'm afraid. I don't think she'd ever miss me if I wasn't around. Like with any pet, people really need to do their research. And the other thing you have to factor in, a hamster or a, or a gerbil is going to be with you two, three years. This little lady here, she can potentially be with us for about 20 odd years. So reptiles, as a general rule, not all species, but as a general rule, they can have quite long lifespans. Compared to sort of most pet species, no, they thrive in a much smaller environment because that's what they're sort of designed to do. The reason why you go out into the countryside, you very rarely, if ever, you'll see a snake coming across you because they're too busy hiding. That's what snakes do, I think. So they do like to be sort of like a bit more confined than traditional animals. Small crocodilian, and the best way to handle them is to grab them firmly right behind the jawline so they can't swing their head back and grab you. Rudolph's reaching the size now where another foot or so I wouldn't be happy handling him, um, but at this size, one man can easily handle one of these crocodilians if you know what you're doing and you've been trained. Um, again, this is where it comes to, they don't make good pets. You make a mistake, they can at easily take your finger off. Just gonna go in behind, grab him by the back of the head, gently ease him out, and then keep your hand locked behind and also support the hind quarters more for his comfort than anything. Certainly when he starts getting much bigger than this, we wouldn't be actively handling him. Nowhere near fully grown yet, but uh, he's potentially going to max out about seven or eight foot long. Like most of the animals here on the park, he's one of our rescues, an ex-pet that was being kept illegally. These guys have got one of the strongest bite forces of any animal in the animal kingdom. And the crocodilians have got a very powerful bite. Even at this size, this guy could easily remove my fingers, which is why I keep my hands nice and firmly locked behind his jaws, but they're certainly, I couldn't think of a worse animal to have as a pet, really. This guy can potentially live 50 or 60 years. So that's the other thing people have to consider when they get a pet reptile, even the more common pet species like corn snakes and leopard geckos. They're not like a hamster or a gerbil that's going to be with you a couple of years. They've got the potential, a lot of these pet reptiles, 30, 40 years easily. But of course, you have to factor in uh, potentially they are dangerous. No, he's never bitten me, but I don't give him the chance to. Crocodilians, you can't trust them. It's not like a dog or a cat. Even though he's quite relaxed and laid back as far as crocodilians go, I'd never trust him. I don't give him that opportunity. So I'd never let him just sit on my lap loose, as it were. Uh, it only takes one mistake and you're gonna lose a finger. So it's just not worth it. Another animal that shouldn't be confused for a house pet is the lynx. While they may look like a beautiful feline, the lynx is a wild cat and a very skilled predator. This is Echo, and she's our beautiful Eurasian lynx. They cover historically Europe and Asia. Used to actually be native here to the UK. And all lynx are characterized by those wonderful little tufts on the tip of the ears and the little short bob tail. And they're the characteristics um, of the four lynx species. She's been with us since she was only a little kit. She's not a rescue, she was brought in as an ambassador animal. We want to start helpfully raising funds for the Iberian lynx breeding project, her close cousin, which is also unfortunately the most endangered wild cat species in the world. I certainly couldn't recommend any wild cat species as being kept as a pet. She certainly has a loyalty to me because she's known me since she was a kit and I can safely come in here with her, but I'm the only one that comes in with her just to be on the safe side. 
At the end of the day, she's a wild animal and you've got to treat them like that. She's not a domestic cat. Despite the purring and the rolling on her back for belly rubs, it can be very easy to forget that these guys are a wild animal. And uh, she's certainly got the, the strength, the ability and the armoury. These guys have got big, long, old claws and teeth on them to do some nasty damage to me. I certainly, if she was a tiger or a lion, I certainly wouldn't be in here with her, no matter what the bond we have. If you were to have a, a bad day, I'd walk away from the situation, whereas if you're saying like a tiger, I wouldn't. But either way, you've got to remember, these are wild animals, so you've got to treat them with that sort of level of respect. They are a predator, basically purely meat eaters, even things like wolves and wild canines. They will actually take uh, vegetable matter into their diet, but cats are strictly, as a general rule, they're, they're meat eaters. But they're one of the most efficient predators on the planet, cats. They're fantastically designed to do what they do. Lynx are what you'd call one of the larger members of the small wildcat species, so that excludes things like leopards, cheetahs, tigers and lions. They're nowhere near the size of the, of the big guys, as it were. But as far as more the sort of uh, wild species of small cat, like servals, ocelots, margays, they're certainly one of the larger species. If people really want to look after an animal like this and they're willing to give it a lovely big enclosure and give it the respect and the time it deserves, then by all means do so, but never be fooled into thinking that this is a suitable pet species um, for sort of 99.5% of people that consider maybe keeping a, a wild cat as a pet, they're really not suitable. Foxes. They're a controversial animal that divide the public's opinion. Some see them as pests and tricksters, while others think they're adorable. Keeping a fox in Britain is legal, however, not without its challenges. They are cheeky, as our crew found out when this guy decided to investigate the camera bag. <laughs> That's what you'd call your traditional UK fox. These grey girls, they are actually exactly the same species. They're just a colour variation that you might be more familiar with in North America. We do rarely get this sort of melanistic dark black grey version in the wild. All three of these guys were born and bred for the UK pet industry. They're incredibly intelligent animals. As you can see, he's having, enjoying an ear scrunch, much like a dog would. Uh, but this, again, is where people sometimes think that maybe they're a good alternative to a, a dog, and they really aren't. They haven't had those thousands of years of domestication. They're really not designed to live indoors. We've heard some reports of foxes being kept in people's flats, and again, they really need to be kept outside if you're going to keep a fox in a nice, big, large outdoor enclosure. They could certainly give you a painful nip. They're not going to remove a finger. They're not going to do anything that's going to cause you any permanent damage. But they could certainly give you a nasty nip if you weren't expecting it. Being a zookeeper, this part of the uh, risk, so we do occasionally, when we have to handle these animals, give them vaccinations, they will give you a nip. And it's not a pleasant experience, but I wouldn't class them as a dangerous animal in the same respect as maybe the caiman or the lynx. Not having had that domestication, there's far more chance of getting a nip off a pet fox than there would be a dog. Ark Wildlife Park is the home to many different types of animals. Some familiar, like these rabbits, goats and pigs, and others a little more unusual. But they all have something in common. They were once pets in a private ownership. Ark Wildlife Park is the place that animals end up when private pet owners don't or can't care for them. It's important to remember that exotics are not for everyone. These animals will live out their lives in captivity, but play a role in educating the public on the reality of keeping exotic pets. Mm -hmm.